All right, so advent of code day 10. Uh, I did it live, but uh, I took too long on part two. Um, so in part one, basically you're given a list of numbers and you have to try to find how many times there is a difference of one between two of the numbers and the number of times there's a difference of three between two of the numbers. It's like there were seven differences of one and five differences of three. So you had to compute that there. And so here was my solution for that. It was pretty simple. Um, so you're supposed to prepend zero and uh, three more than the last one in order to count all of them. Uh, so then you just count how many times the difference was three and how many times it was one. Um, you can do it easily this way by just sorting the list right here. Uh, so that was part one. Part two was really interesting. You had to use dynamic programming to solve it. So basically, uh, you had to find the number of combinations of ways you could get to the end using jumps of size one, two, or three. So this is a three jump. So you could either go from here straight to five, that's one, or you could go to six because that's a jump of two, or uh, to seven because that's seven minus three, or seven minus four is three. Um, so according to Reddit, like you could have done this recursively. Um, I figured out the solution on my own. I used dynamic programming, which um, the solution is actually really simple for it, uh, which I guess I don't need this line because I initialize mem here. So it's an array of all zeros equal to the length of a, which is the input. And then I set the last one equal to one. So basically, mem is keeping track of how many different ways you can get to that, or from that spot, how many ways you can get to the end. So if you're already at the ending spot, then there was one way to get there. And then um, I'm starting at the end of the list here, and then I'm counting how many times um, I'm the number. Right in front of me is either one, two, or three away. So like in this case, I'm at 19. So to get to like the places I can get to, which is 22, I already counted that. That was one. So I'm going to set myself equal to uh, the one right in front of me in that case, because there's one way to get there. And then from 16 to there, here I can show what it looked like at the end and what A looked like. So 183 was the end for me. So from 180 I can only go to one spot, so that's one because I just added that. From 179 I can't get to here because that's four away, but I can get here, so there's one way to do that. But from 178, uh, I can either go to here or here. So I'm going to add up the two of these positions. So that's 1 plus 1 is 2. So then it continues on back some more. Uh, but then once you get to right here, I think is where that is. Yeah. Um, you can either go to here in one step. Or you can go to, actually no, this is the f 4 here. So yeah, you can either go to here in one step, or here in two steps. So you're going to add together those two, which gives 4. And then you're stepping back one more to here. And so we just said this was 4. This stepping to here, if we do that, is worth 2. Stepping to here is worth 2, so 4 plus 2 plus 2 is 8. And so you keep working backwards, and so the solution ended up being a huge number in the trillions. Um, people were saying if you did this recursively, it would take like 8 years potentially. But yeah, it's a pretty clean solution if I do say so myself. Uh, so I ended up getting pretty decent for part 1 at least. Um, I got 1500th, but then I solved part two in the morning after I thought about it. 
so I got 18,000. But other than that, it went pretty well. The map is starting to space out more. Um, so that's it for day 10. Thanks for watching.